the Duke of Hastings is a serious man. He has a lot of uh, dark colored objects and metal items that build up his vibe. Your Grace, may I present Lady Danbury and Lord Bassett? When we get this shot, you know, you see he's got the stone writing set and inkwell. Uh, he's got a dark wood desk behind him. And here you'll notice even on that desk there is a uh, dark marble possibly clock. And here we have a comparable cast uh, eagle. Uh, this uh, scene there is actually a dead heron. It's a hunting scene. Um, I think the birds we see in the Duke's office are actually sitting in flight in the windows. It's actually a cool silhouette that they create. And here is a uh, inkwell that might be sitting on the Duke's desk. Uh, very dark uh, colors to this bronze cast. Uh, English emotive. I, I think it's actually uh, it's uncertain of where it's from, but very you get a very 17th 18th century english vibe from it um here is a uh 1802 so possibly right as this scene is taking place or a little bit earlier uh london silver inkwell set um it could be very well be sitting in this light but dark room and here is a continental roll top desk uh, this one is German from the mid to late 18th century um, and the one we see in uh, the shot uh, looks a little different than this but it has a clock similar to this one sitting on top um, you know it's interesting we don't see uh, the usual uh, angelic symbolism in uh, Bridgerton, but it would have been quite common at the time. It's actually kind of funny. It's actually an American table that, uh, when I was going through items, it seemed like it had a lot of qualities that really matched the vibe of the Duke's office. There's a hardwood table that I did not... Uh, pull in the shot that I actually think this is a good style match for that. But what part? And we have Daphne's room. A lot of actually really cool items here. Uh, we've got the mortar and pestle. We've got the pin cushion. We've got other ceramic items and the ewer. Possible explanation might Miss Bridgerton have for entertaining the suit of a mere baron when she seems to have secured a duke. Could the debutante's mind not be the only thing amiss? The recipe is my own. Rather fashionable, comparable, if I do say so myself. We have a fine mid-18th century silver, sterling silver, uh, stylized ewer that looks pretty much the part for the one that we have on the uh, table then we did have a, another fine 18th century kit here uh, that uh, has a nice pin cushion in the middle and these are all sorts of little room items that you might find expect to find uh, in a room like this and then we did luck out because the one of the cool parts of this scene is the use of the mortar and pestle to mix up the makeup, Rose's own blend. And that's pretty cool because that's something that, uh, you know, the your lady's maid would be able to do kind of specially. Here we have a really, really nice piece. Uh, necessaire box so it's sort of your trinket box for your table um, this one is adorned with moth agates that give it a uh, look like it's been painted on 
and there's a, a spot in the inside for a miniature and then there are all sorts of jeweled little boxes in the interior that would hold a variety of trinkets for the Regency woman. Your Majesty. A lot of things going on in this scene. You know, we have all sorts of ways of serving food. We have teacups. We have, of course, the taza in the background. Um, and uh, the queen even asks for uh, an array of snuff boxes. So, of course, I have to start there. Um, we have several French stylized 18th century snuff boxes that you would likely find in any lord's or lady's uh, collection. Um, this one is particularly uh, of the era, I think. Uh, the scene on top with sort of its classical vibe really brings it home. Um, and see here, even again, you know, you get that 18th century classical scene that is so common in French-inspired work from this time period. We don't normally select furniture for our review because we are very much not a furniture expert. We did find two nice pieces of English furniture that looked like they belonged in this scene. Uh, this footrest and then this mid-18th century uh, settee, CT, uh, you know, it's not even a word that I know how to say, um, that the red and gold royal vibe really, really stick out here. So, continuing a little bit with the royal-ish vibe, we have this lion-adorned lion silver basket that any sort of wonderful uh, food could have been served in. I'm not sure about you, but when I watch Bridgerton, I'm just constantly enamored with the footed bowl after footed bowl that are filled with treats. Um, here you get this one that I believe has uh, claw feet um, and the handle for the basket. Any sort of array of things might find their way uh, onto these. And here we have a taza uh, made of glass. Actually, I believe this is quite an early piece, might be 17th century. Um, and the uh, shape of a taza would really require some serious skill with the uh, glass making process. Um, and here, lastly, you know, we're going to end with the a uh, little bit later 19th century Minton piece, um, just because it's sort of so close to what uh, we see in the shot. And so this is a 1848 uh, Minton Taza. Um, and I, I think it, it, I mean, of course, it's a, it's a gorgeous piece. Um, it's about 35 years past when the show is set. Um, but really, really striking. And, you know, I think if you're looking for... Uh, you know, how do I get into some of these nicer uh, 18th century pieces without uh, really breaking the bank? I mean, of course, there's a lot of options, but, you know, a nice piece of mid-19th mid century Minton would, would get the job done quite well. And now, to find my time machine 
and go get my affiliate marketing check from a 19th century porcelain manufactory. Wow, I can't believe we're done with another episode. It seems like these are just flying. Um, always a big shout out to the Met Museum for being a believer in uh, open access uh, for their archives. It is a game changer out there in the world for being able to create independent media. Um, if you uh, like what we're doing, make sure to subscribe and follow the channel. Um, we've got all sorts of stuff planned for 2021, and we're going to have good fun with it. So thanks for driving by.